Okay, ladies and gentlemen, and also uh, the news people to help you understand what you're looking at. Oh, this is so stressful to look at. This data is so stressful to look at. There's a beam here. Okay, so I'm kind of emotional about this one because it's breathtaking to, to, to see this and not and that no no life safety issue was was immediately called for that it should be supported and people should get out that this is dangerous especially the one image and his narration of this one image sorry about the plane flying over these are columns uh, metal studs and as he believes and it presents as they're taking on the load from above and they're well he didn't say buckling but he says it, it explains their shape it's like torsion buckling here and it looks like it's even broken there the uh yeah i think it is broken off there so these these studs are are, are taking on the, the load from above but not in the right location the correct location <sighs> there's a window that was removed um, he's emphasizing here, if you look here, um, um, here, but I, I clearly see it out of rotation. I see rotation there. Wow, the back of the, this is very interesting. The back of the flint, uh, looks like this, and it curls back around even. It's a little bit of wrap. The, that deformation where we can see the punched hole, this punched hole we shouldn't, normally wouldn't be able to see. It would be this direction out of sight we can see it so that's uh nah that's two studs he put there in the background it's another stud and that's a stud so they faced each other okay we got a window opening to deal with that's that's been covered over that he'll talk about maybe this window has the header the uh the um the, the uh Sorry, guys. The, um, the brick arch. I'm just, I'm just amazed to, to look at this and not scream. You know, the the decision scream. You know, run for the hills. I'm gonna read that narrative to you, but words. I want you to see what you're seeing. And all right, they did things like they doubled up here. I don't see any drywall lapping here, so it wasn't done for that intention. So he doubled there, they doubled here, they doubled here. So it, just guessing that somebody turned these into structural studs, they think, um, when they did this. We, he didn't make mention of this, but this is, uh, this is probably a wood trim. Maybe it's wood trim. Nevertheless, it's buckling now. It's, it's bowing like that. It's not straight. So it's taking the load from above. Remember the image of the window. Let's see, east-west beam. Okay, so there's an east-west beam in here um, that goes this direction. So, Leanne, it would be on this beam and then down to here, low path down to the foundation. We'll get to, that's what I believe we're looking at. We'll get to that. Oh my gosh, look at this thing. It's, again, torsion buckling, if you will. The building is twisting. Uh, the brick are twisting and this load path is just just it's mangling the existing structure now I, I look for the conclusion part and I don't know what kind of partnership he made with with the building owner to make a, a report like this but or what's going on but the I gotta be careful I'm going to give and take, all right? So anyone looking at this, what do you think? What, do you think the engineer should have screamed um, this needs to, uh, is a life safety issue? Literally just state it. Um, we don't have this wall here, just so you know. The left wall, is, as I look at it, is not tied into this wall here. This conduit is loose now. It's not um, connected anywhere. This box is connected. This is exposed box apparently over top of these studs. I don't see any screws in them. So this is access. Oh, this might be drop ceiling access. 
Okay. Okay, we're looking at drop ceiling access. Yeah. I think that's what we're looking at. I'm going with that. Remember that color I talked about? And try to think of this as the ceiling below. And um, this is the outside wall. There's a fracture there. This is inverted inverted dropping um, there's a pipe going along the outside of the wall a wall that's a question mark um, looking at that piece of that drywall up top that was is either fire stopping or it was the higher ceiling at one point I'd like to see more of this all right so electrical wise this is an, this connection is should be closed off even even though it has um, it's uh, non typically non accessible. Um, it should be closed off. I mean, uh, it should be accessible, but typically uh, it's, it's not it's not connected right now. That's what I'm driving at. It, it's going to get worse, but let me see if I can try to get my orientation still. What am I looking at to the left? If that's the drop ceiling. What the hell is that? Uh, boy, is this behind a wall? I mean, I don't see any screws on, out of these studs. And I see a, a box on the surface. So is it another wall that I don't know of, a chase wall? And now I look at the studs and I see that, okay. So I see a new a change of direction. Let's see if I can help you with this. So here's the ceiling. Say this is the ceiling, this assumption, ceiling. This is the wall. That's the top plate. It butts over, they connect the ceiling, that's the wall. This is, yeah, that's what you get living in a city, the noise in the background. Um, it almost looks like a, a copper pan or a rubber material. We'll come back to that. Photo for existing beam to support. Okay. East-west beam to support, verify it isn't tipping to west. Okay, they, they, he still needed data. Um, he's asking the people to verify, and we don't have that data. Now, this was submitted to the municipality. This being submitted to the municipality, they should have, they should have said, hey, look, you, you've got a lot of follow-up in the uh, stuff the engineer is requiring, such as, you know, is it level um, or not? And incidentally, just cut to the chase. He is not on board with the, uh, the construction process. He makes it clear he just did the evaluation, but the construction process is not part of him, meaning the bracing. He did not engineer the bracing. So um, with that said, um, is what he stated. And with that said, we look at a detail where he says he doesn't – I'll show it to you where he says he's not part of the construction process. But this appears to be the detail. This is a 4 by 4 brace, diagonal, all right, braces. This says a steel angle, horizontal leg, placed in horizontal cut and brick facade. Um, so he wants it placed in. This ledger, this ledger system that we go against the wall, I'm not sure how he planned, how it was supposed to be anchored. Again, with this one, um, this looks like a sheet of plywood. And maybe that's that plywood we saw initially. We're going to figure this out. Temporary brick facade, it doesn't say where. Okay, there the, there's the connection down to the floor ground. Okay. Remember I said before, it looks like some type of slide connection, friction. Anchor cleat into pavement to keep braces from sliding. Well, of course. This, he doesn't give a detail on. Um, it may, you know, this detail here to here. He doesn't state. The 4x4 four four, um, is interesting. <sighs> His detail shows a plumb wall, all right? His detail shows a plumb wall with no defects. Um, he states here this is loose brick facade, all right, but it's still plumb. His detail is plumb. Uh, let, let's cut to the chase here. This is the photograph that it's a part of his report. He believes it's brick over the window. We talked about the brick over the window, but if you look at it, it's just 
it's just failing now we can see when I saw that image and I said that hey, brickwork looks good negative it's now rotating out and the, it's staying as a full panel but bursting at that point remember we I was looking at a timeline of a uh, off of Google now not looking at Google we can actually use that timeline off of Google maps and say okay this time it was at this position and now per his report at this time in his report it's at it's now rotating outwards <sighs> my gosh this is terrible the downspouts are in place they're the downspouts I've had a guy tell me there's a 4x4 post whatever um, keep note these are the gas lines that the municipality said we won't work on the structure with these loose bricks above us if I could zoom in more we would see how much they're out of plane and then we're gonna read the report where he's like you know basically you're pulling off the facade and redoing this brick over window opening the, the, the previously repaired wall okay oh my gosh let's get down here and then I'm gonna read the report which is about three pages so now you have some idea what's going on. We look to the left. That's a ladder. So, you know, if you can't make this out, it's a step ladder. Uh, six foot, seven foot, last eight foot ladder. Whatever, six foot. Give me a second. I got to see what that message is. Okay. Uh, oh, I'll give you a cat update. Um, they're around here. Lily and, and the uh, boy and the girl, the little Lily, Lily boy and girl. They're here on the property they ate um she's still looking for her kittens even though she found them but with that said i looked in the trailer multiple times a day for kittens before i finally used it i mean even at even at the location i was at i still had some ptsd going on there looking so i look like her looking for the cat still she even climbed on the shed to look for the cat more cats so I, i'm i'm just as nut as not so as she is all right so look he says two inch cleats nailed to osb so it is osb this is that osb version that you saw so they did follow the instructions there osb flat against wall so we only used two points of connection of this osb that's supposed to work let's think about the osb being in tension locking it down well it's not quite locked down this is just kicking out so it can still lift up it can still lift up, it can still hinge, say, say this is it, it can still pivot from there. But I believe they removed it already by then before the collapse. It can still pivot. If it was locked in place, it becomes your, a, here's your tie and truss system. This asphalt is going to be the connection back to, back to the wall. And this will be there. So there's your connection. So you tie here, um, here. And then the wall system is the other side. So there, there's a strut and tie, rather. And the, um, and the plywood is, if you could, between it, could handle tension, yeah, depending on how, if this was also anchored. If you want to think of it that way, that, okay, that, that would stop bowing in there. Huh? It would have to, you know, break apart the drop plywood in tension if the forces were just there only, which they're not. But which they're not but let's let's move on at this time they have a video of this i wonder if they released it i'm being very patient i'm going to give you this first and then i'll go through the rest of the data with you so we're going to get it you'll get it as i get it all right so this is what he proposed the one inch uh, insulation and he did in millimeters all well minimum clearance okay um adjustable tie okay to tie it tie it tie back in that ties back into here into the block work all right continuous insulation okay air moisture vapor barrier as required we poles good flashing any water come behind there it comes out um, for the last one so good good um, he didn't require parging of the block and so Let's get to the solid block or grouted bond beam. This would be the top. I didn't read that part of the report. Six feet is the width. So we're looking at the building, you know, the whole length of the building. This is a six foot panel. All right, six foot by uh, 12 foot. So six by 12. All right, this doesn't even make sense, right? 
12, 72 square feet. Each, the person pulled a permit for 100 linear feet. Not square feet, 100 linear feet. The, and for the low, the, the, the permit was a joke cost. It was like 850 bucks. So how are you getting all of this for 850? All right, let's look at the rest of the detail. This is his brick, let's see, grouted cells. Okay, this is the block rather. Um, let's see, lap bottom dowels, okay, with vertical bars and grouted cells. He doesn't state, let's see, drilling epoxy. He doesn't say how much to lap. And he's drilling epoxy into uh, east side, one, one foot minimum. I have, remember I talked to you about that? What are you drilling into? What are you actually drilling into? Some soft ass? What? Yeah, you know, what are you drilling into? Is it epoxy it? What the hell are you drilling into? Some soft clay brick, he called it. And then he also called it, um, uh, well, he didn't call out that line, but he called it clay brick. So one foot in the clay brick, the bricks are eight inches. What are, what are you doing there? What, what exactly are you doing, especially with the with the orientation of, the, of them like this. What are you gonna drill? Through one of these bricks and into there? Through the mortar joint? I don't, I don't get this. Let's see the spacing of that. He says three dowels at each side. So he spaced them roughly equally apart. What's the intent of that? The intent is to hold that wall, this section up? Or is it to hold the block wall up? That's the question I would wonder. What's the intent of that? You're putting this up plumb, so it's going to be holding itself okay so it's going to what be holding look at the dowels so we got approximately one foot so you're hearing me think about it as i go and then i process it and i share it with you real quickly so those dowels would have the intent 12 foot tall would have the intent of helping the block walls to the sides i would assume although he only went in, in one foot for some reason he thinks he needs it's a 12 foot wall he thinks he needs to um support it by the wall that's the collapsing wall system is going to help this wall let's look at it so it's one foot his dowels are going in one one inch one foot zero inches um so one foot penetration and then his overlap is one foot and then this is your five number five rebar five ace rebar going up one, two, he put it quite frequently and, and grouted, um, plus or minus six feet. All right, so you're going to be um, just about six feet, no more than seven. CMU infill, infill detail, figure three. Okay, now let's look at it this way. This is the side, oh, side profile, great, okay. This is, this is very critical as far as the report goes. Repair brick facade, so, okay, so I don't know where, where to put this at, either it's one or not. Continuous insulation air gap, okay, that's his detailed brick design. Um, or, original west exterior wall foundation here. Now, this is going to be interesting to look at this. Is this a new wall? Okay, concrete pilaster if wall footing does not extend beyond new column. So if this footing does not extend beyond new column extend not underneath so it would need to be basically rough the same thing so and then they want you to do this con this is going to be a steel column they're going to add no way did they do this in that short period of time but this is a structural element he's adding period let's get this clear this is a structural element this no matter what the city says that guy's inept that's that uh if that if that is rich the one that's talking to us is it rich um the uh then he should be fired the city of course you know I, he, he, okay let me make it clear class action lawsuit guys i know there's a lot of i'm gonna say this i know there's a lot of black people in that building and some poor white people as they say poor white people and some poor black people but you know the first thing the you know, white people did in um champlain tower south they got themselves together some white lawyers and went right after the owner and all that it's time for you guys to get your lawyers together. Class action lawsuit. You all, class action lawsuit. It's time you guys to jump on it. And who would I recommend? Get those white people down there. The same people that represented them. 
Start getting you getting your signatures together, and you guys need to make that contact. Make that contact. This is uh, this is structural. This is a structural member. The city, the city, and I, of course the city is going to not probably pay out, but the city should have should have called called this one as oh this is structural. You, this is a low path. This is the supporting low path. That this low path is being abandoned. It's it's fuck off. This is the new low path that we're talking about. Remember the cinder blocks? In this case, steel column. This is the new low path. This was a structural repair. This was not some brick facade, brick little touch up, brick little whatever, whatever the whatever the fuck that they're feeding you guys. So you city people, you need to get to uh, city. I mean you uh, um um um. You people that live there, but I meant the city, uh, I'm sorry, I keep saying city. I mean the newscaster people need to come back at these uh, the, the, these nasty city people. They're lying. I told you the guy's a Decepticon, a damn rich guy. And ask him, was he part of this inspection? Now, jack the new east beams from sagging. It's already sagging because it's probably bowing. Bulging. Okay, let's get to the report part or do I even bother? Yeah, let's get to the report part for you. Okay, select structural. This is dated the same day of the permit. Here's the permit. Dated 24th, May 24th, May 24th for $3,000. I don't know anybody that would do that for $3,000 in the poorest of neighborhoods, the poorest of contractor. I don't know any city that would accept that evaluation of $3,000. You, 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 you guys got to look for the connection between... The owner of this company, and the city, and the mayor, and this, and the, uh, and the uh, department there. This evaluation is is out of hand. This is totally off, off out of out of uh, out of anywhere. I can't think of the poorest neighborhood in the, the you know that I don't have to think of the poorest one. I can't think of that evaluation going there, especially since they allow a sixteen thousand dollar evaluation for eighty square feet of rubber roofing that goes on top of existing rubber roofing. That they didn't say that they took the 16 grand. But to get $58.25 for this, and remember this permit, again, this permit is done the same, pulled the same day as the inspection, as this report. I ask you this did they see that report? Did they really evaluate it during this and during this, or did they get it afterwards? When did they see that report? Let's look at this report again. We'll set a timestamp on this. So they, so they actually do. So you reporters out there want to look at it. You can find the permit number and look up when it was filed. You'll find the timestamp and the receipts. So now here we have this, the date. The same exact date. So what are the odds? And then you've got to evaluate this. In that building department, they gave it to them. Say they gave, the guy put, said, I want to do the brick, and he handed this over at the same time. Because they're claiming they have the knowledge of this report, that they have it. So they hand it at the same time. Who's, who signed that saying, oh yeah, I don't see anything structurally wrong with this? Because that's what they're saying. This uh, rich guy is saying, oh, they didn't say that anything was structurally wrong. He also is therefore by default admitting that he saw the report. But at, at that time of uh, inspections and of time of... Uh, he's not saying we never had a report. He's not saying that... Oh, it's only the brickwork we looked at. Uh, the brick inspe the uh, the guy only pulled a permit for brick brick replacement, hundred linear feet. We knew nothing of a report. They're not saying that. They're saying that they they had the report per per their demands or or whatever it may be. But it says to whom it may concern. Reference brick wall repairs, and then it goes into the structural steel columns, supporting steel, windows missing, a bunch of stuff. And the guy only writes up 100 linear feet. So how, when were they going to do that steel column? Remember, the permit says brick. It does not say steel. It does not say uh, add a, a, a wall. I'm fucking pissed. This permit, only one there that day, says job. It says the fees. It scrolled up a little bit. It says owner. And all it states is replace 100 linear feet of brick exterior all per city code all right it doesn't say any of the uh steel columns etc now we come to this incomplete that they changed it over to incomplete 
Now all of a sudden, Rich, remember Rich, you guys need to find out, and Trishina showed up on site. Interior CMU is being completed per engineer's report, so they admit to having knowledge of the report. All in one day? How is that possible? It's only the next day. They built their foundation wall. They put in a steel column. They support. They built the struct. Lift the structure up. They were able to get that man lift there in time. Um, when, what time did they get this man lift? What, what was the date of rental on that? When you do the class action lawsuit, it says per engineers with rebar and grout. So this is not part of the the, the, the fees. One opening has been completed. The other is being filled in with CMU. Brick work will start today in sections. Masons will be doing work. This is only the next day they're, they're putting back brickwork? How is that possible that they're putting it back within 24 hours? It's not possible. For those four guys, it's not possible. All right? The possibility would be, you know, you need a big crew and you got to be using a product like Rapid Set. It sets in one hour and you need to be so in tune with each other you need to be a fine-tuned machine you need to then have the inspector come out you need to be the pot there's it's just not i mean they were 24 hours in the day and you had 30 of me there you can get it done 30 of me but not those workers that did that bracing and that stuff that fell down on them and the way they did it those guys aren't that class of worker let's read on wall bracing will be installed per engineer's design Engineer will stop over periodically to, it says will be installed, not is installed, it says will be. So it hasn't been done yet. We're doing their inspection. But we know we saw that bracing. And we saw some metal pipe. We didn't see the 4 by 4s Thanks, to, shout out to the viewer, which I'll give another shout out in a minute. City inspector will stop by periodically. Let's get to that thing. So Tiffany Harris, again, shout out to Tiffany Harris, guys. Shout out to all you guys that can send me stuff. But Tiffany Harris is on point here. Again, so we look at a window. This is not part of the engineer's report saying, hey, look, this window's out of square. It's racking. You know, there's an issue with that. What the hell's going on? I mean, it's it's just, there's that fracture I talked about. Look at that. See it? It's it here. Let's look at the next one. Um, and you can see the bulging. It's just a low path. Now, this is what they did for bracing. This is not what the engineer called for. This looks like uh, one and a half inch, um, roughly. Uh, it looks like some steel tubing. Was weird ass, weird ass tubing. I, I would say it's welded, but it's all black. I don't see a different coloration in there with the weld, with what would might be a weld. Well, it looks, it's not a 4x4, four four. it's not wood, right? It's, 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 look to the right. Looks like metal. And this is the one to the left where they called for, where he called for, I believe that's the panel there. Where he called for it to be 4x4s, four four secured with the cleats, etc. And now we got them bracing a window over here. Here's a downspout that's now, they, they removed for this work. The panels, the, the block wall is in place already. This must have just fallen down because they're working in, in debris field. Um, you see the door is not protected. The, uh, this is a 2x4 apparently, presentedly, turned sideways. I'd argue it's a 2x4, maybe a 2x6. Um, this does look treated to the left. Perhaps that is a 4x4. Let me, I can't get perspective on it. But nevertheless, look at the very base of it. It's not, it's, it's not secure. Okay. Shout out again to Tiffany Harris. Let's look at this one here. The window the window frame, is that arch, he's just, it's two contact points, all right? It's here, it's over there. Um, I don't see any other forms of connections. This thing to the left, what is that? What the hell is it? Shiny or paint? Oh, and that looks like box tube, rolled box tube. Wow. So, the uh, so it's a lot more bracing than than what they call for. Also, I talk about in the other video, this or video, it, bracing is not holding that. I don't I don't know what the intent of these bracing is. All right, let's get back to it. So back to the report. Okay, as 
He was on site on when? The 23rd, the day before. Um, a site visit performed uh, on the property above on May 23rd. On the west face of the building, there are several large patches of clay brick facade, which are separating from the substrate. These large patches appear ready to fall imminently, all right? Now, they use that word imminently pretty much with this building ready to fall imminently. So they understand what imminently means, which may create a safety hazard to cars or, per or passerby, which means life safety. I mean, he's saying it right there. Cars or passerbys, brick falling, death, right? The owner, bodily harm. The owner has already blocked off the area with cones and has begun, re begun, begun removing drywall from the inside of the wall to get a view of what might be happening. So he's still doing evaluation, 23rd, okay? As viewed from the west exterior, and looking at the exterior, there are two former window openings roughly 12 feet tall by six feet wide, which appear to have bricked over some years ago, which have been bricked over some years ago. The clay brick facade on and between these openings is bulging outwardly by several inches, several inches, and looks poised to fall. What the, f what else do you, it says poised to fall. That's not life safety? In anticipation of these areas falling, the brick, in anticipation of these areas falling, the brick facade above the window should be secured. He didn't say, it's a, he should have said must, should be secured. This is to keep the entire facade, entire face of the building from falling away when the bottom area comes loose. The same temporary facade supports as was recommended on February 2nd, 2023. Interesting. So it appears that the support system we're looking at below is from a February 9th, 2023 setup with a little bit of deviation and a little bit of different. However, let's move on may be used here too maybe not must note the elevation or, 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 or will or, or will will work uh, note that the elevation of the steel angle and the detail shall be at above the top of the window opening note that the elevation of the steel angle okay so this is uh should be right let me finish that off Note that the elevation of the steel angle and detail shall be at the above top of the window opening. So not to be confused with that supports I just showed you. He is referencing there, I believe, that's interpretation, this steel angle here. That steel angle. As, you, as it reads, steel angle, right below there. Okay, let's go on. Let's go back to that paragraph. Give you your, your fill-in. Okay, um, okay, In I'm reading from inside the first floor paragraph. You can see boldly there. The drywall is being stripped away, so it's currently active. So he doesn't have all the details if he's still doing it. This reveals that the window, well, he does know some data. This reveals that the window opening were never filled with brick or block. Rather, the clay brick facade was just run right over the opening unsupported. This lack of bracing helps explain why the facade is currently about to topple outward. So do you understand what happened there? He keeps calling it facade, but at some point you change it from facade to structural, that it becomes structural. And let's, let's get you the facade image, what he's talking about. So the openings, brick, no block apparently. And if you look in here, it's in red behind you can see brick so that's that opening i believe that maybe where they put the block sorry about the plane i'd turn it off but you know the plane's flying so you see that the uh so right here is where they had the block in there to up to this point um and it's it's a it's if you can remove it you would remove this this would be the inside of that brick facade you see that he's saying remove um and then put fill it in with block and and support the load path that way all right let's see if we can get another image of that um to the left it looks the same this looks just to be hanging fucking wall not tied in no beam no lintel it appears just to be wall and this appears to be the facade behind it 
K. It's this thing just speaks more and more. All right, so let's get you down here. Oh, these images. So here, bricked over uh, window openings times two. So then one and two and column load path is this way underneath this window, this window here. So um, the light looks good, but it's being pulled. So that's, this is actually probably helping hold these two in as they take the loads from this one, especially this brick takes this load from the brick above, but becomes, it's bulging out. It's actually bulging out here, I think. I think it's rotating in this direction. I see this lip here and they're doing a little bypass. They're trading off, you know, the left and right. Uh, sliding. Let's go back up here. So we read um, inside the floor. Okay, let's move on. This reveals that the windows opening, right? Um, okay. So uh, it reveals the window openings were never filled with brick or block. Rather, the clay brick facade was just run right over the openings. Unsupported. Okay, unsupported. Not the brick weren't unsupported. The, well, yeah, they weren't tied back. They should be tied back to, like, the block system he was coming up with. This uh, lack of bracing helps explain why, the, explain why the facade is currently about to topple outward. It's currently about to topple outward, and the city says that, oh, they don't know anything about it being an issue. That the engineer said it was safe. I don't see where you're saying it's safe. Everything I read here, anything you guys would read here, you, it doesn't say it's he, he doesn't even declare it's safe. All right, so the city's trying to declare that he must state that it's unsafe. But he seems like it's, it's reading as unsafe as you read this. Okay, the brick facade, and it was what a common person thinks. What do you guys think? The brick facade is unlikely to be reserved in place. Okay, so you're unlikely, but it can be brought down in a safe, controlled manner. You bring out, bring down their brick facade, not the structural elements. The stable sections above, above will be secured as mentioned previously. So he believes that you can use bracing to secure that, some of that supports. And also with the column, remember the column he's adding, so he believes that. All right. With the loose facade removed, the window openings can be filled can be filled in with 12 inch wide reinforced concrete masonry units (CMUs). Number five dowels shell. Now he's using the word shell. Shall be drilled and epoxied into the sill of each window opening to secure the base of the infill. Hey, sweetie, it's my baby, my cat. Four vertical number five. I'm gonna pause for a second. Okay. Four vertical number five bars in grouted cells shall be reinforced, shall, shall reinforce the infill wall. Okay, so you're gonna put, he's gonna put the block inside that little opening. Looking at it from the top for you guys to help them understand. So this is 12 inches. All right, this is, well, it ends at 16, 15 and 5 eighths, 3 eighths inch mortar joint. So this is, a, this is the way this block is built. And in here is, could be roundish, curvedish like that. This is the part, oh, there's a little girl. She's coming to eat, the, the other little girl coming to eat. I gotta be whisper quiet. Oh, it's so amazing, she's looking at me. She thinks I'm, she's gonna come past me. She doesn't know where the food is. Little girl, little boy, the food's down there. She was within two feet of me. Hopefully she sees the ball. If not, I gotta go down there and tap on it. Let me let me pause and take care of her or him. Hey guys, Lily just ran off the gray cat. Gray cat might be a boy cat. Okay, so this gets foot solid grouted after you put the number five rebar in. Um, assumption is you put it dead center. It works two directions. Three directions, theoretically. You don't need up three directions or four direct by, by front, back, sideways, four directions, but works by being stiff, tied into the foundation here, and it can't move this way or that way once it's solid grouted without breaking the tension forces of 
the number five rebar and the integral connections between the between them with the wire wire reinforcement they use um, wire reinforcement they use also tying in these let's go over top of it these number five rebars for you reporters out there so you can understand it better let me show you so in this image here this is what they're he's calling for in the rebar would be so this is how it ties to the block and this is reinforcement also this this, this reinforcement it looks like that but also is using grouted meaning fill it solid with, re, with this put a, a number five number five five ace rebar um, inside the inside these 12 inch pretty 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 beefy pretty beefy that's that's where they go you go to 12 inches um, is uh, is the larger one and it would fill the fill the be the base of it the the back area and then the uh, that's Bruce and then you get your, your stability it just transfers it down to the brick though you didn't do you didn't go any further than the brick and you do have the issues of the wall left and right that might pull on it still um, considering your block is put in plumb then you're now the the walls left and right are dependent are getting strength from your dowel system and wait a minute looking at that that would be that dowel system so it would cross yeah the dowel crosses one section of rebar here and one here so it would um, help have the effect of uh, reinforcing the left and right just in that zone and that's that 12 foot so that's 12 foot just in that zone it means it's not it's not continuous down the whole side of the building that it helps out so it would have the effect of uh here's a infills and dialed in it would have the effect of well this it would have the effect of helping this section here and between there a bit two sides so two sides are coming in down so it, it helps out quite a bit and over here it's at least one foot over it's, it's limited you know because you remember it's limited because the dowels are only three of them so this wall system over here gets you know maybe uh, theoretically something like that maybe maybe you get practically nothing at all depending on how it bonds how these bricks bond with the others the neighboring bricks all right, let's move on. This again, I, I this is good stuff for anybody when you start your class action lawsuit. This is the content. Um, oh, come on, let's get back to the document. I'm trying to downsize it. All right. Um, so I'll pick up. I'll pick up here again. But it can be brought down in a safe and controlled manner. The stable sections above will be secured as mentioned previously plus the images I showed you, with the loose facade removed. The window openings can be filled with 12, can be, not must be. So uh, number five, D-ball, but he gives a, he gives a detail. Of, uh, D so that idea was a combination. That was D-bar. That was uh, dowels and rebar. So uh, that's just a word I just made up. My brain does that. Yeah, you should be me. Um, so the uh, number five... Dowels shall be drilled and epoxied into the sill of each window, opening to secure the base of the infill. Um, and so the intent of that one is to seal to secure the base of it. So you're going to start your block up, and they're going to marry the two of them together. Four vertical number five bars. Okay, we already sealed those in the cells. Infill wall. I showed you the detail. The top shall be capped with a uh, there a solid block or grouted bond beam such that the wall above the CMU can bear on the infill like a solid wall. So his intent is, say this is that wall, the your block, say your block is here, right? Well, you can put a piece of wood across here, fill it up somehow, and then say you, you still got some separation of that block, the brick above. Well, then you grout it, you solid fill it with grout, meaning your mortar, mix mortar up and, and, and make it so the load transfers directly down into your block system. All right, top wall shall be capped with uh, either right, and he's given an option, shall be capped with uh, either solid block, 
So if you can get it in there, solid block. Oh, solid block is uh, usually a two inch block. Um, give me an inch and a half. Give me four inches even. But these are solid. And you can fit it in there, but you're still going to have to do some pointing, some deep pointing to get it, the uh, transfer of the loads. So the, um, um, let's see. And remember, he, he solid grouted uh, so many courses. So in essence, he's there already. They're there already. It's just a couple of blocks that are not uh, six foot wide, right? So there's just a few blocks that are not solid filled. So... Um, Intent, you could rebar this, that column, and then put a solid block here. They sell solid 12-inch blocks. Actually, they're kind of not solid, it's, but it's, it's, it's like that. But he wanted a bind beam idea, intent-wise. Could you put the wire across and get the same intent? Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. I think, I think the intent is to transfer the load. Okay? And he wants to cloak cap it off the top for uh, whatever reason to get that transfer of the brick that are loose, not falling down into the damn cores or block or unsupported in areas. So if you get this solid, you now get a transfer of the brick. As you look at the brick, it's like four courses or something like that. The overlay of the block, you need that overlay, that 12 inch, you know, imagine like that, that you now have this zone in here that's eh, not supported. That's why he wants it solid filled intent. Um, so, to transfer the loads. So, let's move on. The top shell be capped. Right. CMU shall be already infilled. After the window openings are infilled with reinforced CMU, the clay brick, clay brick facade to the outside may be replaced. So, let's, wait, let's talk about the engineer. He says the clay brick facade. He didn't say the, all the clay brick. He didn't say that. So, he did say clay brick facade. So, he's specific. That, that's the facade he's talking about, not not the structural low path, which he does talk about. And again, the city doesn't doesn't demand that this come to a, a, a real critical issue. So, I think the report so far is explaining well. I don't know if you can really beat up on the engineer too much because you want to see him stay. It's a life safety issue, and he said it in so many words. Um, you know about people being hurt. Brick falling down, it's going to fail, eminent failure. He said it in all those words. And what do you want to hear? Do you want to hear the terms? What do you want to hear? What if I told you there's an eminent chance a brick might fall on your head if you go over to that area? There's an eminent chance that the wall might fall out. And you go, huh, and you still walk over there. Did you not understand the danger that I just mentioned? Well, I think the city is playing dumb, not understanding the danger they, that he's mentioning in this report. This timeline is critical to me. This report's the 24th, remember? And they pull the permit on the 24th for one, 100 linear feet, of, linear feet of brick. Not all this other stuff. And yet the fucking city showed up and talked about the structural items, the, the block infill. Now, they didn't talk about that column beam thing. One person did that they keep saying that he spoke up, that he was installing a a beam or something, and then all of a sudden now we get um, information that, we get no information about that guy, that one guy that claims it, know about it, that he was installing something that made it clear in a couple of uh, Google searches that people told me about, but it doesn't go anywhere any, any further. But let's get back to this, and uh, I'm sorry for the length of time it takes. Um, for, because there's, there's multiple more reports to go over, but this is the one we're going to focus on. The top shall be uh, capped with um, either solid block or grouted beat night. The clay brick facade. This time, so I'm kind of shilling for the engineer here because I don't want to. His report, I, don't, I, I think his report is stating the danger. All right. He didn't say, he didn't say get, well, not, we don't see it here. Maybe he does say it another time. But he didn't say, they should condemn the building. He, but he mentioned everything that's condemnable, right? He said no heat, right? No heat is condemnable. All right, no heat, but you got your mechanic there fixing it. That's not, you know, they'll, they'll let him, it'll be done in two hours. You got heat, so there's no harm, no foul there, especially for summertime. No heat, no big deal. Um, no heat in wintertime, freezing weather, you know, dropping weather, rooms are zero degrees. Yeah, that, that's condemnable real quickly. Or, you know, it's emergency situation. 
So the, but they wouldn't condemn immediately. They, they let emergency situation happen. Um, this time the new facade shall be braced back against the face of the structural wall. Okay. So you understand, he understands that that's the, 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 the he, he's declaring that that brick we see come off is facade. And I said it in a couple of videos back that, oh, it is a kind of facade because we see the cinder blocks on the corner of the structure. And you got to look at the content in my other videos. We see the cinder blocks down there and they show that the, that they had clips on them that held the brick on the facade. So the first red brick, if you will, the red ones. They are facade, and I said that's based on how far does the steel go over. If the steel doesn't go over on top of those red bricks, facade. And apparently the steel does not go on top of it, so it's not um, that load-bearing. But it could be if it was tied into the brick back here, then you just can't pull off the facade for free without disturbing the brick behind it. Um, so, it, But that's not the case. It's... Uh, this time, the new facade shall be braced uh, back against the... So he's talking about the facade. Shall be braced back against the face of the braced? Shall be braced back against the face of the structural wall with brick pintles to keep it plumb and secure. A continuous rigid insulation can also be installed between the CMU and clay brick facade, leaving a small... Yeah. Okay, this word braced... Um, let's, 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 no, I left there, but let's, let's use this as his word braced. I mean, cause you can't put a insulation behind a wall if you just brace it, right? He doesn't, I don't think he means this bracing. I think he's referring to, um, this as bracing adjustable tie to brace it back. I think he means those because there's his insulation there also. So I don't think that was his, uh, his meaning. So let's go up here. Um, we're almost done. All right. To the north of the two windows, opening in question, there is another issue. Another issue. The wall appears to be loosening some stability, losing some, losing some stability, and is causing deformation. This is evidenced by the bowing in the interior light gauge steel furring and drywall which i showed you down below this bulge that they, they, they bulge as it's like questioning they bulge in my opinion they bulge as if a large downward force is acting upon them this this downward force may be due to the reaction of an east-west beam which bears on the west exterior wall so let me go over that let's stop there so we go to the images, and he does say east-west beam. Okay, right there, east-west beam. All right, east-west beam going at that east-west. West wall? I don't know. I think that's the west, east-west direction he's talking about. So or maybe it's the other way. I, 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 I don't care. But the studs, th these are different. You see the double pack on them? Some of them are double or not. Let's come down to this one. What is this image? This one. All right. So one of the ways to tell if it's low bearing is you put your hand on it, and you, if it's really tense, tense, it's not loose because these are metal studs. They would just hold the design of drywall. You could put your hand on them and rotate them real like 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 really flimsy. But if you put your hand on them and you try to rotate them and they feel tight and taut, yeah, they they they're they're uh. Load, they're taking on that load that he's just either that he's describing and I don't think he's made a mistake with that so those metal beams are now putting it into the floor all right the floor area they're buckling oh, fuck I thought I was almost done right right the uh yeah, yeah, another issue, that one, right? Okay. Um, and his force is acting upon him. This downward force may be due to the reaction of the east-west beam, May, which be which bears the west exterior wall. Adding a steel column, so adding a steel column is what he shows. To support the east-west beam would alleviate much of the load from the exterior wall while the facade is rebuilt. Wait a minute. While the facade is rebuilt, he wants first 
the beam to go up. Let's get that clear. So it says, let's clear it up. In my opinion, this is what I see. This downward force may be due to the reaction of the east-west beam, which bears on the west exterior wall. Adding a steel column to support the east-west beam would alleviate, alleviate, we know what the word alleviate means, much of the load, so he's clear about what he wants to alleviate, the load from the exterior wall while the side is rebuilt. So clearly the stages are, do you fix the beam first, change the load path. This column may be, and he states it, uh, W6 by 15. All right, that's the steel beam that he's requesting. All right, position as near to the inside face of the structural wall as possible. Wow, Lily's coming now to eat. Is that Lily to eat the other one's food? I'm going to have to put more food out for the gray cat. Oh, the gray cat must be a boy cat because they're, they're all, all of them must be girls then. And she's trying to literally eat the food from the gray cat because I have a separate location for her and the, and the other ones. I'm going to get on top of it. I, I try to resolve it. I don't like cats and fighting or anything else. And Lily just ran her off. No hissing. The cold form drywall, the cold form and drywall. So cold, the cold form, what, what's the cold form? That's the metal studs. All right. And he's just using the word cold form and he left out studs. The cold form and drywall may be reshaped around it to um, incorporate it into the, ref to, into the refinished wall. The brick facade outside this area may be secured and built as described for other areas, okay? Meaning block, attach the son of a bitch, epoxy, whatever it may be. This, this is the must. The steel column must rest on a footing. This may be either the wall footing for the exterior wall, okay? If it's wide enough, it includes it. It includes some overlap, all right? If it is wide enough to fit the column or a new pilaster, the pilaster... Uh, um, um, if it is wide enough to fit the column or a new pilaster, the pilaster, if needed, would be 12 by 12, 12 inches by 12 inches, concrete section to the exterior foundation wall in the lower level, meaning, I guess, the basement level, and you're going to carry the load down. This will allow the existing foundation to support the load from the east-west beam above, which is what... It should already be doing. He's saying that's what it should, the intent is what it should be doing, is what it should be doing. And it's not. Before fitting the steel column into position, the east west beam should be checked to make sure it is level and is not dropped. So that beam should be checked to level to make sure it hasn't dropped. He does a drawing like that. Okay? If the beam has dropped slightly, then it should be jacked back upward. To a proper level position for the column to fit to that elevation. So if it does drop slightly, so he does have a rule slightly, but it's a if it's a lot, he wants to talk. He obviously is new, new, all bets are off. Talk to him. This will require field measurements and possible field cutting and or shimming. All right. The option, the options, the uh, Options. The opinions and recommendations in this port are based on field measurements and, and observable conditions. This is on the 23rd, not the 24th, apparently. It is not an assessment of the non-structural elements of the local building code or an in-depth analysis of the full structure. So he makes it clear he did not do an in-depth analysis of the full structure. Apparently, it's these windows and that little thing there. And it's not the full structure, so it's not another part. Should conditions change, which 100% conditions changed, right? When they were working on it and they tore out a wall and this fell out this way and that way. And they went higher up and they removed the section that he does not recall for in his report. I think that would be conditions changed. Um, they didn't do the, the uh, pilaster first. And then the steel column, unless you're going to tell me they did. All right. 
And possibly they did, and, and we don't know about it, right? That they bought in some steel column and they put it up. Um, I don't think so. Because it was only they only pulled the permit that day, and it was collapsed within within days. It, the inspection didn't talk about the column, all right? The inspection report didn't talk about the column. It only talked about the CMUs, all right? It didn't talk about the pilaster, so... It's kind of weird that they didn't they didn't hit only those two. Should conditions change or new information become available, the engineer reserves the right to amend the re his recommendations. So it's a mail. His recommendations and this report. Select structural engineering assumes no liability on construction. See, he wants no liability on construction or demolition means and methods. Oh, okay. So no, he was a uh, correction in the beginning part of the video. video. Let's make it clear that for clarity, he's saying there's no liability on construction. So he's saying that, you know what, this is my plans, but, um, you know, you got to, uh, yeah, I don't know how you get around that one. Or demolition means. Well, the demolition means were he didn't describe how to dem demolish it or the methods. Notify the engineer immediately should field conditions vary from your, from your expectations. That's interesting. So what if they expected to fall? A couple of things. Don't notify the engineer. That's very interesting. As a new course of action may be needed, if you have any questions about the findings or recommendations, please contact me. David P. Okay. So we went over this. and uh, Previously prepared wall. And David is re referencing here. And again, the city does not talk about the pilasters that he recommends. That he, that, he, that he says, you know, should be installed. This section right here. And the beam. The city, the city did not inspect this. He said this would go up first, right? And in, in this order of things. City uh, did not inspect, right? Okay. So... This will end this video. Love you guys. We'll go to the next reports. But this report is what you'll get now.